Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We're continuing our examination of the letter written to a group of believers. We call it Hebrews. We're in the 11th chapter of Hebrews. It's the great chapter, the great gallery of our faith. By faith, the men of old believed. And so we're at the seventh verse now. At this point in time, we've seen these truths right here. So don't ever forget this. First verse. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of not seen, things not seen. Then verse six. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that God is and that God is rewarder of those who seek him. So those two verses book in uh, the initial uh, uh, exposure that we have here of people of faith, that men of old gained approval by faith. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God. By faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death. All of these, by faith, by faith, and we've looked at them in previous episodes. Now, verse 7 is a one-verse declaration by faith. And, you know, as I mentioned in a previous episode, some of these things, we're going to go back and, uh, you know, chase them around in the Old Testament and see what they say. But some of them will be too long. Like, well, we're going to get to, uh, by faith, Abraham. <laughs> really? Abraham? Uh, there's dozens and dozens of chapters about Abraham and, and what happened with him. So that really goes beyond uh, this time together. But this one I'm sort of intrigued by. We may do it. Verse 7, Hebrews 11. By faith, Noah. <laughs> and you go, oh, I know the Noah story. Yeah, yeah, you do. It's Genesis chapter 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, those four chapters right there about the flood and everything. And, you know, we may actually go back and just read through those things with minimal comments. I, I don't know. We'll wait and see. But I want you just to hear what is revealed here in this one verse. One verse, one sentence that actually gives tremendous insight and interpretation to what you see in Genesis 6 through 9. Okay? So it says, by faith, Noah, being warned by God about things not yet seen. Okay, you likely know about the uh, being warned by God, and God told him what was going to happen, et cetera, et cetera. But about things not yet seen? What was it that was not yet seen? Anybody know? Anybody raise their hands? <laughs> it's probably the idea <clears throat> that it had never rained on the earth. It had never rained in the way that we know rain, in the hydrological cycle that we experience today. Because prior to the flood, things were substantially different. Substantially different. Well, how different? So much so that after the flood, God comes back and tells Noah and says, now you're going to have winter, spring, summer, and fall. Now there were seasons. And prior to that, apparently there weren't seasons in the way that we know it. So anyway, we'll chase that around a little bit. We'll go read that. Being warned by God about things not yet seen, sentence continues, in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his family. Now that's interesting, isn't it? That reverence carries the idea of being cautious, of being circumspect, uh, of being apprehensive in a good kind of way, not in a negative kind of way, but being thoughtful about something. And so uh, to extrapolate from that means that he was standing in awe of, that he was in reverence <coughs> of what God had called him to do, to prepare an ark for the salvation of his household. The bottom line is, by the time it was said and done, Noah saved his household. You know, so often we get distracted by trying to do this for our community, do this for the world, do this, do that. If we as believers would start and focus on just saving our household, the rest would take care of itself. Now, does that mean that that's all that Noah did? No, because we find out 
in other portions of, of, of Scripture that he preached. He was a preacher of righteousness. He preached for 120 years, and nobody believed. Only his family believed. And they only believed by getting on the boat, you know. <laughs> they got on the ark, so they did believe. But can you imagine? Most churches would have fired him long ago, right? But anyway, in reverence, he prepared an ark for the salvation of his family, by which he condemned the world. The building of that ark, walking in obedience to what God had told him to do, as crazy as it sounded, can you imagine? He's building this gigantic thing over a picture of decades and decades and decades and decades, explaining to the people that judgment is coming, and that judgment is coming by the water, which they only know from what they see on the ground and the lakes and et cetera, and the dew and the mist and all that kind of stuff. That's all they know about water. And he's telling them that the water is going to fall from the sky. It's going to rise up from within the earth. to such a degree that it's going to cover everything. And you're going to need to be on this thing because this thing right here, which looks like it weighs a, a vast amount, which it did, but that it's going to float and it will save you. And you need to believe in the God that's going to be bringing judgment. And you need to repent over the evil that you're doing, et cetera, et cetera. They didn't believe him. By building that ark, by getting on it, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. He inherited, became an heir of, and it says the righteousness here. Remember, righteousness is being in a right relationship, being right with somebody. He's an heir of that, and that came about by faith. So let's close by reading the entire sentence without me interrupting here. Hebrews 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned by God about things not yet seen, in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. There's much more here, but folks, don't ever forget, it is by faith. When we see these mighty deeds, when we see these folks moving forth and doing things in the name of the Lord. It is by faith. May we live likewise. Again, I'm Dale. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.